What is going on guys? Welcome back to another build video. This build video is for my new Heavy Attack Templar PvP build, which is called the Lightbringer. It's got insane execute damage on that Radiant Oppression. Super, super powerful. You can just beam all day long and it's incorporating heavy attacks and it is just a very powerful build on a one bar as well. So we'll get straight into it. We'll get into the sets. So the first set we are running is Deadly Strike, which gives you a line of weapon and spell damage, critical chance, another line of weapon and spell damage, and increases your damage over time and channels attacks by 15%, so that's heavy attacks, radiant oppression, and other things on the build as well, so it's all going to be buffing our damage. We're running a Lightning Staff as well, as this will increase uh, damage, um, direct damage attacks as well. So we're going to be hitting super hard with this. We've got Sharpened, Lightning Staff with a Weapon Damage Enchantment. Uh, the head is Nibbany Bay, just one piece, just for 410 critical resistance. Reinforced Heavy with a Max Health Enchant. And the next set we are running is the new Crafted set, which is um, Tharaka's Strike. Uh, which will give you three lines of weapon and spell damage and dealing damage with a fully charged heavy attack grants major berserk for four seconds increasing your damage done by 10 percent and this occur this can occur every one second so the uptime is basically a hundred percent so the chest is heavy just for some more resistances reinforced with max magica uh, the shoulders are deadly arm corps uh, max stamina i've got on there I've got Invigorating, but I'd recommend Impenetrable, and that's Medium. Uh, the Waist is Tharaka's Belt, Impenetrable, Max Magica. The Brace is the same, Impenetrable, Max Magica. The Greaves are Heavy, uh, which is Reinforced, Max Magica. And the Boots are Medium, Impenetrable, Max Magica. So we've got the, the big pieces Heavy, and the smaller pieces are medium and the necklace is deadly with a deadly ring and oaken soul all bloodthirsty all weapon damage enchantments so the bloodthirsty is to boost that execute damage um, which is really really going to hit super hard um, so we'll get into the, uh, the the character sheet just check i've got the food on don't you have any food on Right, yeah, you need the Bewitched Sugar Skulls on because you're heavy attacking, so sustain is not really much of an issue on this build. Um, even though the obviously the sustains are quite low, if you pop a potion, they're not too bad. You know, topping out around 1100, the magic are in stamina, but like I said, you're heavy attacking all the time, so sustain is not really an issue on heavy attack builds. We've got 44 points into health, 19 into stamina, none into magicka, and that's going to give us a 31... Uh, K, well, nearly 32k health, sorry, 20k stamina, and 22,000 max magica. So, they they are not like massive bars, um, but the damage is all in the execute. Um, the spell damage is 5,274, but this will go up to around 6k. Um, but again, the damage is not really on the stat sheets itself. It's more sort of in the sets, which don't show on the stat pages. So don't be discouraged by this. It will be a lot stronger in practice. Um, it's just the, the sheet doesn't do it justice. Um, the resistances are at 2,600, uh, 26,000, sorry, and physical is 23. Critical resistance is just a little over 2K, which is nice. I'm also a... Vampire Stage 3, I've got the Apprentice Mundus on, and I'm also a Breton, but I would recommend a Damage Race just to boost that damage even further, because Sustain on a Heavy Attack build is probably not ideal, so I'd just recommend like an Orc, a Dark Elf, High Elf, Khajiit even just for extra critical. The critical damage ain't too bad on the build, it's 28%, plus the base 50, so you're at 78%, which is not too bad. So we get into the skills. 
So we've got the elemental susceptibility. So this is what you hit your target with before you engage in a fight. It's going to hit them with major breach. And also it's going to, every 7.5 seconds, the enemy is going to be afflicted with burning, chilled and concussion status effects. Uh, we've got toppling charge. I did originally have, um, you can swap between these two, elusive mist for extra damage. Um, coming out of the shadows and to escape or toppling charge but i found toppling charge to be a little bit better as it um will impale the enemy and it's going to give you major protection it's going to reduce your damage taken by 10 percent. it's also going to set them off balance it's going to deal magic damage and it's also going to interrupt them so i think toppling charge might be a little bit better but you can use the elusive mist if you wish just to boost the damage a little bit more um radiant oppression is your execute um just get off this one here so that's your execute raiding oppression that's going to be hitting really hard with all them bloodthirsty traits on and the uh, you know the deadly and just the major berserk all of it combined this is going to be hitting very very hard uh, we've got resolving vigor for our heal over time and mine resolve to boost that armor even more uh, honor the dead is just our sort of spam heal very very strong and also Eye of the Lightning, so it's going to summon a lightning storm around you. Again, it's a channeled over time um, effect, so it's going to benefit from the Deadly Strike and also the um, Tharakas as well, um, because that's Major Berserk. So everything is going to benefit from themselves. And of course, the Lightning Staff, the reason we're running a Lightning Staff... is because it increases your damage done with direct and channeled effects. So heavy attack is direct and channeled. Uh, the radiant oppression is channeled. And that is also over time as well. So you're going to benefit from there. You can also swap the ultimate out if you're not interested in that one. You could easily put on Dawnbreaker for even more damage. So that is also a flex spot. So make sure you have all your points into your three class lines, all your passives. Also all your passives into the destruction staff. All your passives in medium and heavy. All your passives in vampire. All your passives in undaunted, assault and support line. All your racial passives and of course your medicinal use to make your potions last longer. Now, so we'll get into the champion points. So green, I just recommend Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Steed's Blessing is the three you really want for PvP. I've got the Exploiter, so when you're doing that toppling charge, you're going to get a 10% damage done bonus. Master at Arms for more direct damage. Weapons Expert, so your heavy attacks are going to hit 20% harder. Deadly Aim for another 6% single target bonus damage. Uh, the red, we've got Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Rejuvenation, and Pain's Refuge. Again, you might not need the Rejuvenation. You could swap this out for Sustained by Suffering um, if you want more recoveries. But I'd, like I said, you, you're probably better off with another CP. Um, I would probably recommend... Um, not relentlessness because we've already got major protection probably uh, celerity would be nice or um, another good one would be bastion to increase the damage done against enemies that are shielded so that's another good one there so we're going to get in quickly to how we actually play the build so you're going to pre-buff with your vigor to see our defensive stats are so they nearly touching uh, 30k on the spell resistance and 27k on the physical resistance so the penetration's at yeah 4k, but of course we've got the um, we've got the major breach from here. So you're about 10k pen. So be a pre-buff with vigor, on the dead, just to make sure you're at full health, and then you want to come in with your elemental susceptibility, toppling charge into a heavy attack, and just keep heavy attacking and toppling charge until they're low on health. And then just hit them with the Radiant Oppression. If your um, ultimate is ready, again, so you'd hit them with the Elemental Susceptibility, pre-buff of course. Into the toppling charge, hit your ultimate. Heavy attack, and just keep heavy attacking. Toppling charge, keeping them off balance, and then just hit them with that Radiant Oppression. And it's going to hit super, super hard. 
It's going to be a very strong, powerful build. Like I said, you've got two heals as well, so you've got plenty of healing to go. Um, we're not really using a lot of stamina based skills, it's only vigor, so again, you can do plenty of dodge rolling. That bar's basically for blocking and dodge rolling. But just keep the heavy attacks up because of again the sustain is low on this build so you want to be keeping them heavy attacks basically just hold the heavy attack button and throw your skills in between combat uh, so that's the build guys like i said the radiant oppression is really going to be aggressive um, with this build you can just spam it all day long like i said just make sure you heavy attack and get that major berserk bonus uh, so yep that's the uh, section of the build done for the Lightspringer, a very powerful, simple, easy PvP build. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Drop this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and any comments, drop them in the comment section below. And stay tuned in the video for the clips of the build in action, and I will see you in the next build video.